So today I will be talking about AI, and I saw that a lot of people have heard about AI. So instead of going too much details into AI, I start want to go back 150 years, when the first time electricity was commercialized. And at that time, there were two applications of electricity. One on the left-hand side was how electricity can actually kill people. And on the right-hand side was the bulb. And this is a real story. Both the applications of electricity was shown to the world. Why am I telling you this story? Because in AI, we have the both stories too. We have the scenario of AI being this doomsday scenario, where it will take away all the jobs, and it will, the robots will take over the world. But there is another world also, a world where AI is used for social good, where AI is used to solve problems for the people at the bottom of the pyramid. And that's the story I'm going to tell you today. I'll give you three use cases. All three is something I'm personally involved with and I have built. The first one is how AI is helping to adopt renewable energy. One of the main problems of adoption of renewable energy in cities is people who have a lot of roofs have no idea about how big potential is their roofs if they install solar cells. So we thought, why not to use AI for making people aware of their rooftop potential? What we did is through satellite images train the machine which identifies rooftop areas. And this is what the machine was trained to do. And you can see this is hardly even humans are not able to, to identify the, the, the roof so well. But machines were 95 to 98% accurate. In the other picture you can see it not only identifies the same roof, it also identifies two roofs which are although connected have different elevation. That's really amazing, how well machines can do that. And once we train the machine, what we could build is someone types in his address, the machine scans, the, identifies the roof, scans the rooftop area. Not only that, it also identifies the obstacles in the roof, so like mumties or other obstacles or the water tanks. And then it calculates the area in the roof which, where you can install solar panels. And then in the real time, you will know if you had solar panels, how much energy you will save today. Love it? Number one case. The second use case is how AI is helping to reduce gang violence. This is a project we worked in Chicago in together with uh, people from FBI and the government of Chicago. Gangs typically use different kinds of languages while they are exchanging messages on Twitter. This is some of those kind of you know, gang violence, and even the words that they use are quite unique. So we first train the machine which understands gang violence. And secondly, we try to connect that to real world. What we saw that we, for example, we saw that gangs are exchanging messages on Twitter, and then a real violence is happening. Is there a correlation between uh, exchange of tweets and actual violence? When it's done on the same day, not really. But when we shift the days to one and then two, we see there is an actual correlation between gangs exchanging tweets, fighting with each other on Twitter, and then a gang violence happening in two days. Amazing, because now, just by watching that gangs are exchanging tweets, we will know in a couple of days there will be a gang violence. Not only that, we can also pinpoint who are those people who will do the violence, and where will that be? So we build a network analysis. And we basically could connect to a given tweet to a group of people and a location. So now we can prevent gang violence in Chicago. The third use case is fighting conflicts. In Somalia, we try to analyze a vegetation index. Basically, it shows that whether there's good vegetation and back. The red one means it's stretch vegetation. And then, we looked at the data for the last four years. And what we saw, whenever there is a lack of vegetation, suddenly there is an increase in conflicts and human death. You can understand why. Lack of vegetation, people moving up, creating conflicts and human death. Again, another point. Went down vegetation in place, increase in, in uh, conflicts. So this way, we can actually predict 
potential conflicts just by looking at, through satellite images, the vegetation index. Again, we can prevent and save human life and prevent conflicts. I gave you these three examples just to show that what kind of different things we can do. But the key to this, all of that, is these systems are not built by experts in sitting in Silicon Valley. This system is built by people from all over the world who are collaborating together, giving their time for free, and building the solutions. People like, um, I forgot her name, she's from Somalia, she's herself a refugee. Or Aram from Pakistan. She studied, she grew up in, in a village where women are not allowed to study. Or Kulsum from US, she is the world's first weightlifter who used hijab in an international weightlifting competition. These are the people who have learned data science online, came together to our platform and building these solutions, solving social problems. We are working in the last six months since we started, over 500 people from 64 countries collaborated and solving these problems. What other problems we are solving? We are solving a real challenge in Istanbul that if an earthquake happens, what are the effects of earthquake will be? Or we are trying to work with, in Brazil, identifying forest fire and try to prevent them to make damage. Or in fact, in Nigeria, trying to understand the full potential of solar power energy. Or in Nepal, working with World Food Program, trying to identify the kind of crops people are growing so that we can fight hunger. And what I'm trying to say here, and I'm, I'm trying to show you a world where not governments, not corporates, but people, communities, collaborating, coming together, and solving their problems. That's the future that I want to build, and I hope you guys would also like to build together. Thanks a lot.